Hi, Russ here again. In this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the difference between a good or professional Word document or template and a not so good or not so professional Word document and template. And ultimately, I mean, the difference between the two comes down to two things. First of all, it's how the, the, the Word document or template has been set up. That's critical because despite the fact that you can open up Word and you can start typing, select some text and make the font bigger, change the font from Times New Roman or Calibri to, to Arial or to something else like that, make it bold and underline it. Even though you can do that straight off the bat and you can get fairly good results with Word pretty quickly by doing that, you know, it looks good, it looks okay, it's going to print out nice, it's, you know, visually appealing. That's not actually the way that we're going to use Word. And from a business perspective, that's not going to get you very far because when you start adding, you know, adding extra things in like images and tables and then you want to indent text and you want to put quotes in and all the other stuff that we need to do, then that the, the, the initial method there just isn't going to work. And unfortunately, Microsoft haven't really been the guiding light in actually leading the way on this kind of training. And in my own view is like they've, they've completely balls it up. They really have. And, you know, and the, there's a reason why, um, the, the level of word knowledge out there today is so appalling. And one of the biggest faults of that is Microsoft. And it's just, it's, it's just, it's terrible. Um, and that is the second point. That's user education. And it's because people think that you, this is how you use Word. Um, and it's by its very design, by the interface's very design, it's actually leading you to believe that. And it's, again, for, for simple letters and stuff like that, yeah, you'll get away with it. But for longer, more complicated documents, you won't. And of course, as a business, what, they, what is then happening is when people can't use the tools correctly, is it's costing you, certainly going to cost you a lot of time. And we all know what time is. So, and uh, from, you know, from your workforce's perspective, from your team's perspective, I mean, I'm sure uh, that you've used tools and, you know, you've hated the tools that you've got to use, but you have to use them. And you just don't relish the fact of, you know, coming in and just wasting time and knowing it's going to, you know, um, things are going to go wrong. And um, it's just, yeah, it's just not a nice experience or a nice environment. So those are the two key things with Word. One is the getting the setup right. And the second thing is actually training your guys on how to use Word. And that's, that's one of the things that will, but I do both of those things, of course, but um, that is in, in my 25 years experience. Those are the main problems that, that companies have with Word is they don't know how to, how, they don't know how to use Word and they don't know how to obviously teach their guys. And it's like the blind leading the blind, unfortunately. But um, anyway, in this, I, I want to show you about the difference between some good and some uh, not so good templates. Now, with the first one here as a contract, which I did actually quite recently, um, only um, a couple of months ago. Now, I've taken away, I've taken out all the client information in there. There's nothing to identify them. And please don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not your fault. It's not the client's fault that they don't know how to use Word correctly. Because like I say, Microsoft have designed this, that you think you should do it like this, this, and this. And it works for a time, but then when you want to dig a little deeper, it then stops working, it becomes problematic. And they're not really helping um, with with kind of your education and what's going on. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the original contract, and, and then I'm going to open up the final contract. So here's the final. And here's the original. Now, what normally happens when I, when, when clients contact me, of course, they've, they've got a problem with their template. Um, and they, they kind of say, basically, Russ, can you help us out here, please? You know, we, we can't get this to work, blah, 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 blah. Um, and let me just turn off the, the grid lines there in both. And then I'll put these side by side just so that you can see. Okay, so on the left, we have the original contract. On the right, we have the final. And I, like I say, I've taken out all the all the client information. What's the zoom on that now? The zoom on that is 70%. The zoom on the zoom in the original on the left is 70%. The zoom in the original on, on the sorry, the final on the right is also 70%. Now you look at them and there's not much difference. Okay. I've grayed out the logo on, on the on the final copy. But in terms of what you actually see here, there's not a lot of difference. So you, you know, you say, well, okay, Russ, well, what's the difference between between the templates? Well, the difference because of this, this is a contract. The difference here is in the output. Now, if I show you the the output, because the the client delivers the contracts via PDF, the Word documents look the same. 
Right, here's the here's the original contract. That's what it looks like when the, the client was sending this out. You've lost all the, the address information here, you've lost the pricing here, and you've lost lost all of this. And it's really, really messy. As you see, it's just it's just illegible. However, with the final contract, this is what you now get. You now get I've had to blank that out, but you now get the, the information. You get all the, the addresses, you get everything works well, you get the price, you get all the other information, and it works a trick. Something very, very simple, but again, this is just the difference between a well set up template and a poor template. Now, I don't think for a second that the client in words, you know, when he found out his word template didn't work, I don't think for a second he then, con you know, went looking for someone to fix it. He probably spent a few hours trying to fix it himself, you know, because, you, you know, you want to know what's going wrong. You can try and fix it yourself, save yourself a little bit of time, a little bit of money. But in the end, the it proved a bit of a, too much of a problem. So then the client reached out for me. And that, for me to do that was like three to four hours work, if I recall. Um, the second one, this particular template is a very, very graphic intensive template. Now I know the client was having lots of problems with this and uh, I did a case study on this client and just looking at the original to the final there, you can see that the original file size is 3,640 kilobytes, whereas the final one is 703. So again, with designing the template correctly, you're actually reducing the file size, you're reducing the resources. And there's, I won't go into the reasons here, but there's lots of reasons why, um, why that happens. And it's, it's not by accident. That's for sure. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a design thing where we're actually making the, the, the documents, um, responsive and, uh, easier to work with and things like that. So let me have, again, I have the, the original on the, the left and I have the final on the right. Now, if I, will it let me do a synchronized scrolling? No, it's not going to let me synchronize scroll. So as you can see, I mean, I've, I've put a box over the logo there. Um, it's not my intention to, to embarrass. It's, this is just the way we use Word. And as you can see here, as I scroll through, okay, the, the, in, in the final here, we've got a bit more in terms of the table of contents, but we scroll down, but the layout's the same. Yeah. Or it looks pretty much the same. However, when we start looking into, into the actual structure and the design of the document, so we click on view, then we click on show, then we click on navigation pane. We see that we have a little bit of, nav you know, of the headings, but they're, they're not actually in the correct order because if you've seen my earlier video where I talk about levels and ranges, um, we, you know, we, we start off on level one and then we come through the document down to level nine. But here, this level is a greater one than that level and it shouldn't happen in structured documentation. But anyway, so we come through the document and there you go. And they look like the, like the contract, the previous one, they look pretty much the same. I mean, there's not a lot of difference between them. However, there's a huge difference between them because when I click on, let's say, if I, when I click on view and I click on navigation pane here, now we have contents. Now, if I come up to, we can't get to contents in the original. Again, it's only a small problem, but that one, that one works there. This one works here. So now I can navigate through and my hierarchy is right. I can navigate through to the document. I've got quick navigation. But let me just get rid of the navigation panes there. But another way that we can actually determine how good this is, is how reactive it is to um, design changes. And not that you'd necessarily do this in a branded document, but again, this is how, if you integrate the document correctly, how it all kind of works together. So what we're gonna do now is in the original, this is some other client stuff that I've done. If I change, if I just start to, to change some of the color palettes. You can see that on the front page there, that we're getting some reaction or some change in the, the image, but that's the image that I placed over their logo. That's not something in, in, in the actual original. However, when I come to the, the final design, we know in, the image at the top here is not going to change because that's a fixed image. But now what happens is we start to see some, some reaction. And this is the difference. And can you see like the headings change? If I just zoom in here a little bit, like I say, this image here is a fixed image, so that's not going to change. However, 
everything else is pretty reactive. So when I come down here and if I pick some of the built-in office colors, now you're starting to see some, some changes. Let me just maximize that. And then I can pick these, these design, these colors, just so that you can see how effective that is. And again, like I say, that's not necessarily something that you're going to do in your branded document, but it depends on how many colors or how many different brand designs that you've got for your documentation. For example, if you've got, let's say, three departments, and you have a, a branded color for each department, even if it's just subtle changes, then these are the kind of, this is the kind of easy, easy change, easy effect that you can actually do. And like I say, that's not possible in the original. It's a fixed, it's a fixed layer. So the, this is just something else that, that we can actually do. If I just close that and I close that, I won't make any changes there or save any changes. And the third one I want to just show you, I won't do all five because I'm conscious of the video time. This was a proposal template that I did um, earlier on this year. And this is a very, very complex layout. Now, the original was done in InDesign, converted to PDF, but then the, the client couldn't work with it because um, InDesign, well, you know, I, I don't use InDesign, but I do a lot of InDesign to Word conversions. And what's unique about this template is they've actually got like five documents built into one document. Now, I did say to the client, you know, I, I would actually split these down into different templates, but they were adamant that it was going to stay as it was. So here we see, here we, at the top, we can see we have the original template. And as you can see, it's 1,944 kilobytes. The final, which you now know after seeing the previous two documents, is going to look pretty much exactly like the original is now one sixth of the size again because this is getting the design right and the structure right not so much nowadays but on older machines when you know i across slow networks now you can see what a big problem this would have been trying to open up a, a document that's almost two meg in size before you've done anything with it in comparison with something that's only 300k and again this is a design thing with words so there's the original and i'm just going to going to zoom out here so you can see the whole document and like as like i say it's you know there's like five documents in one you've got your front cover then you have your table of contents and you've got a cover letter and then we're coming down here and then you know the the overview of what we do then you've got this um the team this um full page divider then we've got this then we're onto the team where you've got like three three areas for portfolios and you've got this gray border, then the exact next page or the very next page of the project summary without this gray sidebar, then goals and objectives. Then we're back into the gray sidebar on the timeline, pricing plan, agreements, terms and conditions and appendix. And then we're on to the back cover page. And like I say, I mean, there's like five different documents in here. And believe it or not, um, this layer is extremely complicated. I mean, I, I don't know how complicated it would be in InDesign, but I can sure see why. The client wouldn't, you know, couldn't manage this. They, they they couldn't change anything because it is just so. It is it is very very complicated. So they gave it to me and they basically asked asked for my help, and I created the. Here's the final, and what I'm going to do as I did before, I'll put the final on the right, and I'll put the original on the left. Now we're on twenty percent on both, and if I zoom into the table of contents on the original. And none of this is, it's all manually done. It's, 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 there's nothing, there's nothing clickable there. So, and again, if I come to the navigation pane, in one of my earlier articles on LinkedIn, I wrote about how you can quickly check how good your Word documents and templates are by looking at the navigation pane. Because Word uses styles, it uses this hierarchy, hierarchy of levels. And it not only provides you with quick navigation, but it orientates the reader as well in terms of, you know, the document, how well it's structured and authored and things like that. Whereas when we come to the final, then now we've got table of contents, cover letter, the team, and, and so on and so forth. And I mean, one of the reasons why you don't get all of this is because they're using text boxes in the document throughout here, things like that. And text boxes do have uses, but in Word, I would advise against using them for, for navigable elements because text boxes suppress um, headings, and that's why you don't get anything clickable. However, in, in, in the final now, we're, we're fully clickable on the table of contents. Um, 
And let me just zoom in a little bit, little bit more here. And again, if you saw my earlier video on ranges and things like that, we can now start selecting content and we can, if I wanted to move that down and I can then do things like that, but you, you, you can't do that. Um, if you don't use the styles and structure this correctly, again, this is one of the things um, which which I try and emphasize and reiterate. We've got two different kind of color text here. This is just to show that this one here is left aligned, whereas this one, because of the gray bar in timeline, actually has a different indent. And this was just like the the um, an awareness video that I did for, for the client. And even though I designed this for them in Word and it's a beautiful layout and everything, they're still going to struggle with the um, with managing this because it's it's like I say it is a very very complex layout. I did offer to do video training because one of the, one of the things that I offer for clients is after I've worked out how they they operate with Word and they design their templates and documents. Once I know how they do it, I then can build them the new ones using Word's functionality. And then I also offer to train their guys by doing custom video training on exactly how they use their own templates. So that way there's nothing left to chance. Everybody knows what they're doing and the efficiency just, just skyrockets. Um, one of the case studies on my site, I mean, uh, I've just working with me for five days, saved the client almost $50,000 a year. Um, and you know, when, when you've got an ROI like that, then it's just, it's phenomenal. But a lot of people just say, well, no, it's just Microsoft Word, right? Well, there you go. It's just saving 50,000 bucks in the first year. So, um, you know, there's massive savings to be had. And again, coming back to, to the document and like I just, like I did in the, in the previous sample with the landscape document with lots of images. Again, how reactive is it? And now this is, this is how reactive it is in the, in the final one. showing that it's all nicely integrated and all, all, all works well. I'll leave this on a nice yellow orange there, which is a built-in Microsoft um, color. And when I mouse over on the original, there is none of that. And again, this is just showing the, the level of ability and skill and the reactiveness of the template. And it's indicative of, of how good it, it is and how easy it is going to be to manage. And as you can see, it isn't going to be able to manage. It isn't going to be easy to manage. That's the problem. So if I just close that original, and I'll just want just show you one more thing here as well, because this is this is a design thing. And again, this is not something you're necessarily ever going to do in your um, company documentation, your branded documents. But once it's designed correctly, if we click on the design tab, you now get these what we call style sets. And now by mason over here, you can actually um, bearing in mind the spacing and, and everything and the the layout on this was actually defined for this template. So by applying this different style set is actually going to throw some things out. But if you saw so, but it, what this does is it enables us to have quick changes throughout the document. And then if you saw something that you like, oh, okay, I could work with this for a certain kind of document. Then you would pick that style set and then you'd go in and, and retweak the styles. Um, and that's what you do. And that's just very, just this kind of thing allows, like I say, rapid changes, rapid global changes in your document just by mason over and then clicking and applying. And uh, again, like I said, there's going to be a bit of work, but because of the, the actual initial design of this kind of template, that's not necessarily going to work. But in, in simple things like letters and, and that, then it's going to work very, very well. And that's just something that you can use. Anyway, I won't go into the other two, um, two sample documents I'm going to do because I'm I'm conscious that this video is almost was well, just touching 19 minutes now but I hope this video has been useful I hope it's been um, helpful in seeing kind of what the differences can be between let's say you know just a normal or a um, what you think is going to be how to use a word a, a, a document or template designed like that versus one which has actually been thought out, structured well and designed and those kind of differences. And again, I mean, it, it looks pretty minimal. However, the, the time savings can be quite phenomenal. And, you know, when you're, when you're saving yourself, let's say, you know, an hour a day on working with Word, and that's a 20% saving, which is, you know, is, you know, is not something that you're, you're, um, you're going to knock really. And like I say, it comes down to two things in Word. It's one is obviously using, learning how to use Word. And again, I'll tell you now, you need to learn styles. Simple as that. Learn how to use styles. Everything else comes into place. There's loads of information out there on how to use styles. 
I've got my own free course on how to use styles. I've got a paid course that follows up as well, if you so wish. But there's loads of free information out there on how to use it. And so that's it. That's the first one is how to use styles. And secondly, is teach your guys on how to use it. Everybody claims that they know how to use Microsoft Word, yet they all use Word differently. That's the problem. Okay, nail those two things. Word becomes very, very easy. Anyway, it's over 20 minutes now on the video and uh, it's running on a bit. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.